Welcome to the NSCHBC EDGE podcast, leading the way in the business of medicine. Now here's your host, Terry Fletcher. Hello everyone and welcome to the NSCHBC EDGE podcast. I'm your host, Terry Fletcher. The EDGE podcast is brought to you today by the National Society of Certified Healthcare Business Consultants. Our goal is to discuss healthy business principles, have conversations on the business side of medicine so that you and your practice can thrive, be profitable, and successful for years to come. This week on the EDGE podcast, I welcome fellow NSCHBC member Carl White, founder of Market Advisory Group Incorporated, helping private practice owners stay private. Carl White has been in the healthcare marketing world for most of his working life, and his company specializes in healthcare marketing. Carl, Carl, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me, Terry. So our topic today, actually, I'm excited about it because this is not my space, but I wish it was. (laughs) So I'm happy to talk to somebody who's a subject matter expert on it. And that's really about getting your presence out there, right? From Google, your SEO, which I know you'll explain for medical and dental practices. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, It's everywhere. Google's everywhere. Well, and it's interesting because um, as I'm as I keep hearing about SEO and, you know, a lot of people have to look up that acronym sometimes for your search engine option optimization. See, I knew what that was. Yeah. Um, I wanted to start at the basics. So I think marketing and healthcare can be overlooked by a lot of practices. Actually, let's face it, it is overlooked and most practices yeah. don't even know where to start. So where would you have them start when it comes to presence? Where I tell everybody to start is, it sounds, well, whatever it sounds like, is reviews, um, reviews online. And the reason is because step away from Google or anything online for a second, we spend our days all day, every day, trying to convince, in this case, prospective patients that we're really good at what we do, we're a good doctor, we're a good dentist, but that's just us saying it. When other people say it too, that really helps. And for a lot of people, that's more credible. And online, that takes the form of online reviews. So after you've checked basic boxes like a website, uh, which can be simple or flashy, whatever you want, um, you know, getting your address, all these basic things, I tell clients, anybody, the next place to go, especially if time and money are tight, or start getting reviews because having other people say nice things about you helps compared to you just saying nice things about yourself. So it's interesting you said that because I noticed, and I think just to our listeners, you know, I noticed that a lot of payers now are sending out surveys to patients and they're using those surveys on if they're going to resign that physician to that payer again for the next year, you know, that Mm -hmm. is affecting contracting. I was like, oh my gosh, Mm -hmm. but some of the questions, (laughs) I mean, I think I I actually recently got one from a Blue Cross Blue Shield plan just because I'm inquiring on some of it. And yeah. the, the question number nine was, did you like your doctor? The first one had, the first eight questions had nothing to do with the doctor. It was about scheduling and, and aesthetics and was the, you know, um, yeah. was the practice clean and, and was it easy parking? And, and I, I kind of was not amused, but when are you going to get to asking, did you like your doctor? Yeah. Question nine. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was yeah. Crazy. I'm hearing that more and more. And um, there's just another form of the same thing. So you know, if you already have a bunch of good reviews out there, then you should feel pretty good that you're going to do well in those surveys, I would think. Now, do you think it's okay for a physician? So they're in with a practice or they're in with a patient, I'm sorry. And, you know, it's, they're having their, um, their encounter, their office mm-hmm. visit. And then towards the end, should they direct them somewhere to leave a review? Or what, what do you recommend on that to get those reviews? So the global answer is make it as easy as possible for that person to leave a review because... Happy patients, which for most practices is the majority of them, happy customers, clients, patients never think to leave a review, um, whereas the unhappy people will find the time. They do. So, <laughs> yeah, we, we, when we're angry, man, we, we carve out the time, don't we, to complain, but the happies never praise on their own. They have to be asked. So uh, when I work with clients, you know, they say, yes, I'll use your review service. I say, great. The next conversation we need to have is to figure out how it's going to, like in your daily operational world of patients coming and going and phones ringing and whatever, what makes the most sense because you got to get into the habit and do it regularly. There's options of how to do it regularly. The, you know, the, the asking somebody, you know, looking them in the eye, asking them face to face is of course the, you know, the most probably, you know, the highest conversion rate for every 10 you ask, you're probably going to get closer to 10 than any other way. 
but that's uncomfortable to people and it kind of becomes a barrier and it feels icky and weird and all that's fine. Um, there's more to it than that, but, you know, just make it regularly regular with most of my clients. They kind of ask after hours in the form of putting their names, you know, in a system and then letting the system take over. Um, I'm, I'm but noticing sure. That, so I'm noticing yeah. that some of these are, uh, which make, like you said, make it as easy as possible. Mm -hmm. um, what I have in, in some practices, instead of saying, hey, you know, go to go to our Facebook page and put it on, give us a great review, or if you yeah. wouldn't mind, could, you know, we're on Twitter or something like that. I've noticed that a lot of practices now are saying, um, you know, when you go to your portal, you know, in our website, the patient portal, mm -hmm. when you sign in, there's a section in there where you can leave us a review if you'd like, and I would appreciate it. So what do you think about that versus going to social media? Um. Either can work as long as it's the fewest clicks necessary yeah. to send somebody out to wherever you'd like them to leave a review. Um, the way we do it is you're going to get an email or a text that's the, the only topic of either is, hey, would you please leave us a review? There's repetition in case they don't leave it the first or second time. So either of those can work, but you got to follow the you know good principles of it's got to be super duper easy. It can be the only thing that you're talking about. And usually you got to ask them more than one time because even the best intentioned, happiest people forget. Well, and you just brought up something that, again, you're 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 prompting me to, to think all these things, which yeah. is great. You <laughs> said you, usually an email or text. So they have to actually ask a patient, right? Is it OK that you might get a text or an email kind of like going to get your your card, you know, serviced? You might yeah. get a text or an email to, to ask how you you know liked your sure. visit today. You have to ask them for permission for that, right? If you already have it, yeah, but yeah, you got to have permission. That's true. Just like any other communication you want to send to them, you got to have permission to do so. Okay. You also have to have with every communication you send somewhere that's pretty easy to find a, a way to unsubscribe or opt out. Oh, that's right. usually at the bottom, you know, text stop or click here to unsubscribe. And that's all pretty standard fare these days, but they do have to be there. Yeah. Okay. So like my political stuff that keeps coming in, stop, stop, stop. I must type right? stop. And you know what? Long. Follow that because the next day you're <laughs> going to get another one and you're on some different list. They, I do. They want it bad, you know, and they're, they'll, they'll, there's loopholes in everything. Right. I so do. yeah, I, 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 I've had that too, where I unsubscribe and two days later and I just look at it and I go, Again. I swear I just told you. And then, yeah. Yeah, and if they you ever give them money, they find you. They hunt you down. Oh, oh my gosh! Yeah, then you just you just it's an invitation to be bothered. So you it is look yourself it is. in the mirror and blame who you see. <laughs> well, so now do you set up practices with with a texting option for that? Yeah, so the service I have it has email nice. and text. I just say please don't do both because you don't right. need to. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Now let's let's kind of circle back to to Google and yeah. and understanding the this healthcare space and search mode. And the reason I say that is there's you know there's a joke out there. I'm sure you've heard it. A lot of patients when they have some kind of an ailment or they feel something hurts or something pops up a rash or something, they go to Doctor Google. Yeah. <laughs> so we know everybody's Dr. on Google there either on their phone, yeah. <laughs> yeah, either on their phone or on the computer. And yeah. you know even my Never daughter did it, and I was like, that's not what you have go to the doctor that's not it yeah. but yeah. when you're on google um how important is it to and and how do you really get in that healthcare space search mode where you're one of the first ones that pop up so that's the world of seo search engine optimization which my personal opinion that's a terrible name for it but it was it. cooked up by engineers for engineers a long long time ago um SEO, so it's the optimization, is, is, is the search engine is Google and optimi and optimizing it means so that you climb as high as you can in rankings. I just, I, what I tell people is SEO is just, it's the sum total of things that you do so that Google gets to know, like, and trust you. And once you hit that point, a, as you build trust with Google and keep it over time, it feels better about climbing you higher and higher in search rankings. Um, even though Google is this, they keep their algorithm remarkably well hidden. There's an industry of SEOs out there that try to parse and dissect. There's a few things that we know that are always important for, let's just take like a local medical practice, even if they have a number of offices, each office has some reasonable radius emanating out of it. And that's kind of their, their capture area or their, you know, their hunting ground. And that's their locality. Um, for local SEO, good quality website with good SEO, um, remember there's two audiences, there's people in Google, talk to people, Google will figure it out. Um, that's one part. The second part is this property called your Google business profile. Google loves it. 
Uh, Google loves it when you use other Google stuff and Google Business Profile is one of them. If we could, we can't, but if you saw one on screen, everybody listening would recognize it immediately. It's a really valuable piece of property. It's free to set up, Google doesn't charge. It tells Google a lot about who you are, what you do, where you are. Um, and when you get that synced up nicely with your website, good things happen. Reviews is another one. Um, it's another, you know, we didn't talk about that a second ago, but Google likes reviews too. Google can read them. Google can see the five stars, know what they mean. Uh, the more reviews you get, Google goes, wow, you know, look at all these people who say nice things about Dr. So-and-so's practice. Dr. So-and-so must be pretty good. Um, we're going to reward him or her with, with ranking increases. All other things being equal, right? Everybody else, your, comp your competition is trying to do the same thing. And the last one is something called a backlink, which there's debate on this. Backlinks are good. A backlink just means that, you know, after, so, so this podcast uh, I, you know, the episode of which I'm going to put on my website and uh, the NSC HBC website, which Google really likes and respects, is going to have my website in the show notes. And therefore, uh, and you could click on that link back to my website. Oh, OK. The, log the simple logic is Google trusts the NSC HBC website more than mine. Not that it distrusts me, but it's all relative. And Google says, well, if NSC HBC thought it's a good idea to put Market Advisory Group's website on their website, somebody we trust trusts Carl. Hmm, I think we trust Carl a bit more. That's the value of a backlink. And you can do backlinks well. You can also screw them up. And there's an industry out there that screws them up. Uh, be careful. But nevertheless, having your, your own online property linked elsewhere in places that Google trusts is, is one of So there's like four things. There's more than this. But the big four in this local SEO world your website, Google Business Profile, reviews and backlinks. You're hitting on nice cylinders there. You're off to a good start for local. Now, your competition might be doing the same thing and better than you, and then it's kind of an arms race and you've got to decide what you want to do. But that's kind of the, the 180 seconds on <laughs> local oh, SEO. Wow. So it's not, it sounds like I need to hire you for getting stuff on my back. Well, stuff. you're, I mean, it's funny because <laughs> you're national, so it's different. National, regional, big geography SEO is different. There's some overlap. There's definitely some overlap, but some differences too. It's kind of Different crazy. strategy, different things you go after. Yeah. Well, now, does this work in the reverse where if somebody has bad reviews that this could be a problem? Sure. Now, you know. But but forget about Google. If you've got a bunch of bad reviews, nobody's calling you, right? Yeah. To the extent that they're reading it, um, and to the extent that they're real patients. Um, All right. And, and even if they're not, it's really hard. You know, the number one knock on reviews is that oh, they're all fake. You know, they're all this, they're all that. Right. And and once in a blue moon, a, a client will ask about that, or somebody will, you know, well, I I, I don't want to do it because I think they're all fake. And my only answer is, yeah, there's fakes out there. It's true. Uh, they're hard to get rid of. That's true, too. Uh, all I can tell you is that for my clients, you know, we all know we're asking real patients who had really good experiences. They're real. They're all real. And doubters will doubt. Somebody who looks at somebody's reviews and says, I think they're all fake. There's, we're never going to know who they are. And even if we did, we probably couldn't change their mind. You can't control that. So just go after good. But yeah, if you've got a bunch of one stars uh, or two stars and even half of them are real, Google's not your problem. Your problem is you've got other problems. Read the reviews. What are these people saying? Because there might be some good feedback in there, even if it's painful. Make some changes. You know? and I, I noticed that a lot of practices actually aren't even on top of their reviews. They yeah. don't know what people are saying. They don't know what patients are saying. I had one uh, provider recently that um, they weren't aware that they had a Facebook page that was created for them that they had no idea was out there. And I know that was yeah. something they used to do. So that can happen. A Google business profile listing can be created on your behalf by Google. If enough people search your name, um, just take Google. If enough people search your name or search you out, uh, Google will look at that and eventually say, man, maybe we should just fire up a, a listing because that way all these people who we don't know and never will are searching for, you know, Jane Smith can find a listing and may or may not be accurate. Who knows? But now it's out there. And it's good. So what do you do about that? Google yourself every once in a while. Go on Facebook and Facebook search yourself every once in a while and see what you find. And if you see a name out there that's yours, claim it. It's free to claim. And then you own it. And you can clean it up. You can take it down. You can, but you own it. This, 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 these are online pieces of property and they're really valuable. And it's, it's, it's something that sometimes is overlooked. And, you know, it's to me, 
uh, it's as valuable as real tangible property and you should own it, you know? And so people are saying things about you out there and you can actually find it. Just Google yourself once every three months, see what you find. Go on Yelp once every three months, see what you find. So if you find you something, know, grab it. So you and I work in a space that I'm sure both of us have. I know I have my biggest client has over 150 physicians and I've got a lot of clients that are one doctor practices. And mm -hmm. so my question is, is that sometimes getting a marketing team or hiring a marketing firm can be mm -hmm. expensive, but I'm thinking that it's expensive not to, especially of what, you know, you could lose or, or like you yeah. said, not owning your, your space out there. What do you recommend? Let's, let's start with a smaller practice because mm -hmm. I'm not finding that they have staff in house that knows, first of all, that really understands marketing yeah. and it's, well, it's, a, it's an art form. <laughs> Yeah, and let, let's split that out a little further and okay. say those who might have budget versus those who don't. So budget is two components. There's time and money, right? And so, and, and together, they equal a marketing budget and they need to be enough. And there's no number on what that is. If you're short on one, then the other needs to compensate. So if your budget's really, let's say you just, you start up, you know, you opened up a month ago uh, and you have no money yet. Well, then you got to hustle, you know, because you do, no matter what, you got to get the word out about who you are, what you do, why you're better, what's different about you. People need to know you. Uh, they need to be able to find you and they're not going to do it on their own. And so then you got to go hustle. So you need a website, build your own. I mean, or find a simple solution. You, you can, my God, you could spend a lot of money on a website, but you do not have to spend much money at all on a website and you can change it as you, as your practice evolves, as your budget grows. Um, so one's got to compensate for the other. The, the other thing is uh, it doesn't have to be, I mean, expensive is in the eye of the beholder. I've got a bunch of clients that are small and, and it's a single service that we work together on its reviews so that their website's good enough. Um, and that's not sort of apologizing for it. Their website's good enough. Um, their budget, their growth needs are, it all adds up to, I need modest. You know what? Then I'd say, let's get other people saying nice things about you and see what happens. We can always step it up or we can just leave it where it is. And a lot of them just leave it where it is and they're happy. And uh, not much changes. Single doc practice is smaller, but they're busy. Um, there just isn't a lot of time. And and so that works. You know, it, it's it can be expensive, um, even if it's a higher price point, you know, just, just compare. If you're going to look at marketing as a cost in isolation of itself, it's always going to, you're always going to have a big question mark hanging over it. But if instead you compare it to um, say like the typical, you know, first year revenue of a new patient, pick that. And then compare, if I spent this amount of money and how many patients would I need to get to break even? And if that feels palatable, because there isn't a guarantee that you're going to get it, and go for it, you know? And as long as that amount of money wouldn't sink the, sink the practice if you didn't get anything, it's not like a bet, bet the company decision, go for it, or at least consider it. But but don't think of marketing as, as a cost in isolation, because that's when a lot of people, oh, it's expensive. Well, what are you getting for it? What's it designed to get? What could it get? Um, think of it that way. You might still say no, but at least you're, you expect marketing, anyone should expect marketing to deliver, you know, leads, visibility, some kind of valuable outcome. If, if you expect it to deliver that, then as you're considering its cost, you should consider that too. Don't separate them and then bring them back. Because what will happen is you'll go cheap, you'll pick silly things, and then you're going to get angry when it's not delivering what you wanted, but you didn't consider that in the first place. So just let them travel together as you're considering it. Now, what about some things, now I'm going to go a little old school and then kind of bring it forward. We're in the digital age. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there's a lot of things actually that can even be free, like like Facebook and posting on certain social, sure. certain social medias. But back in the day, I remember, you know, a lot of practices would put their uh, information, phone number, everything on a park bench or on a mm -hmm. side of, you know, side of a car or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about those things as far as, um, you know, advertising and advertising mm -hmm. marketing is different. I realize that I know some practices, you know, have the pens like pharmaceutical companies like to hand out. Yeah. So people take them, um, yeah. Recently, they I had one um, physician office. They had the small bottles of the um, the hand sanitizer, yeah. you know, uh, eyeglass yeah. cleaners, and they have their logo and, and their information on it. What do you think about all that? Is that just is is that silly, or is that something that is even helpful in the marketing realm? Depends on what its goal is. It's not silly. Offline, the the offline world has its place. 
Uh, definitely. I mean, uh, I'll throw another example in there. Um, I know people, their business is helping any type of business, medical practice, dental or otherwise, with direct mail. And they have their place. You just, any sort of marketing tactic, you have to know how to do it in a way where if it's going to work, you'll know that it's working. So let's take direct mail. Um, if you're thinking about doing a direct mail once, save your money because it takes time for people to notice it and recognize it and then remember it. And that just takes repetition. Forget we're talking about marketing. Most things in order for them to become memorable in our lives and then attractive in our lives take repetition. They just do. So if you're going to go down that path and that might make sense to you um, and there might be a good reason for it, just, you know, swallow hard and embrace the fact that you're going to have to do it over and over and over again. Um, pens, you know, little bottles of hand sanitizer, that sort of stuff. The value of those is keeping your name in front of whoever it is you want to keep your name in front of. And, and, and you know, is what's the ROI in a pen? I don't know. I mean, who that, I mean, you, you know, you're never going to know. <laughs> who knows what that is? You're never going to know. And the biggest knock on uh, the offline older school world is that, you know, the joke is, uh, half my marketing spend works. I just don't know which half. And so it's the idea of, you know, you're going to stick a little chip in that pen and track it and watch it right. You're never going to know, you know, whereas in some of the online world, um, you can measure anything you want in the online world, but not all of it's really valuable measurements. And so, um, you know, that could be like a separate question about, you know, how do you know what's working? But this is the trade-off with, with offline. Um, but so if your goal is, look, I need to have my name in front of people always, then pens, park benches, giveaways, those things can make sense. Uh, you know, you can go to a conference and you could collect 5,000 pens. Some of those people are giving away pens because they don't want to seem like the only one not giving something away. <laughs> so they, you know, they, they. That's awesome. That's the funniest you thing know, I've heard. It's like, That's I know. True. You know, when I worked in large <laughs> corporate, before I started Mark Advisor Group, I worked in large corporate America. We, you know. We hated conferences. We hated them. Um, the only reason, because they were really expensive, it took a lot of time to plan. Nobody ever came by because we had a Salesforce army out there all the time educating doctors on the same thing that we were trying to tell them. But they already knew everything. There really wasn't that much new to say. But the reason that we went is because we were afraid that if we didn't show up, they would wonder if we were still in business or not, which was itself silly. But wow, group, but that's group, true. Yeah. Group think took over. So you know, why would you do those things if you feel it's important to keep your name in front of somebody else? Or you think, you know what, you know, uh, I gave a bottle of hand sanitizer out and then that patient had a party on Friday night and they had a bunch of friends over and say, you have hand sanitizer. And they say, yeah, I just got this from my dentist. <gasps> Who's your dentist? I need to switch. You can never tell, right. you know, is that a reason to go spend it? I don't know. That's your individual choice. Not something I would do or recommend, but I wouldn't stop anybody if they felt strongly about it. Um, right. It's not even something that I do, but just know what you're getting into. I mean, any marketing, lots of marketing tactics can work as, you know, number one, they have to be aligned with the strategy. And number two, you just have to do them in a way so that the payoff you're hoping for, you're doing it in a way that's designed, right? So back to the direct mail, you better hit them regularly. If you're going to do it once, just, you know what, write a check and burn it because at least you'd save your time. Uh, it's not going to work. Right. You know, I throw away all my all my junk mail. I don't even look at it. Of course you do. And, and you know, even, I do. And I'm in this business. You know? <laughs> You're and in just, the business. You don't even look at it either. Yeah. See? Sometimes I do. And I look at it. And I go, Ugh. I wonder if I'll see this nine more times. Maybe I'll pay know. attention. You know? Yeah. I'm surprised people still do that, actually, just with all the the virtual options out there and, and you know, the social media, it, it's good and bad. I mean, it, sometimes it makes me crazy because I think it's there to incite and to, mm -hmm. you know, drive people crazy, but it's also sometimes can be free. Well, nowadays it's not because now that blue check mark is really important to people. Well, yeah, that's true in the Twitter subscription world. Fees. Yeah, but, but, subscription fees. But what's common and what you just said between, you know, a pile of mail buried inside of which is Dr. X's direct mail piece or on your, your, you know, your Instagram feed is saturation, right? It's just yeah. harder to stand out and repetition, you know, I don't know, hundred years ago, maybe you'll have to say something to somebody twice because there was half the number of people and there wasn't direct mail. Well, it's different now. And you just got to say it more often. It's just kind of, 
Well, you leaders. actually brought up a good point too, you know, uh, for our listeners, you know, everybody knows there's different social medias. There's Facebook, there's Twitter, there's Instagram, there's, mm -hmm. I think, I and I know people do TikTok. I don't, I, it's not my mm -hmm. thing. But what is for medical practices? What space are they in on social media? Is it Facebook still? Is that the big one? Depends on where their patient population is. Um, okay. Facebook's trending older, Instagram, not quite as much. TikTok has got, you know, the, 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 the stereotype is a really young demographic, but not exclusively. The thing with TikTok is you better be prepared to feed the beast. And that's, you know, a couple of okay. videos a day while you're getting up and it never slows down. So if you can do that, it's great. Um, it's really a search engine masking as a social media platform. Um, and so just, you know, go where they go. The marketing principle, number one, target patient X, define him or her, him and her, and then go where they go. Where do they go? Do some research, you know, figure it out. Um, you don't have to be precise, clinically precise. There's some obvious answers. Nine out of every 10 searches, nine point something, every 10 searches are done on Google. It's one of the easier questions to answer. Doesn't make it easy to rank, but it makes it easy to find. Um, make a decision. Um, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, YouTube is, you know, the number one search engine on earth is Google. The number two, I think, is YouTube, um, both owned by Google. So, you know, they're talking to each other. Uh, no secret there. So kind of, you know, go where they go. And if it seems overwhelming, think about it this way. Produce a piece of content, a blog, a video, whatever, and reproduce it everywhere else. You know, build it once, use it more than once, and you can get a lot of mileage. It takes a little bit of planning, but would you rather write one blog and repurpose it five ways? or write five separate blogs and put it in the same five places. I'd rather take one and repurpose it. One Do that repurpose. month after month after month. Right. Well, and, and to our listeners too, one thing that I think you need to keep in mind, whenever you're, you're doing anything in your practice or bringing anybody in, for example, if you hire me, I'm a consultant, you, you want to know, you know, is am I a coder, biller, auditor, what is it that I do? You want that. So now when you're looking at marketing, you also want that subject matter uh, expertise in there. So, I, you just like you you wouldn't hopefully um, you know bring somebody in who had no experience in coding no experience in financial planning no experience in you know uh, different aspects of your business make sure yeah. you don't do that in marketing as well so I think that it could actually be expensive if you you know did that uh, and not have the results you're looking for but I think it, it definitely would be cost effective to at least talk to somebody like you, Carl, and see what you can do for the practice. And has there been a time when you've said, okay, here's what we can do. And maybe it was a practice saying, here's what you can do. And, you know, we, we may not be able to help you. We may be able to, and every, there's not a one size fits all. Oh yeah. I, I've said, you mean, have I said to somebody, I'm not a good fit or I don't think I can yeah. help. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, it's been a combination of, uh, I mean, there's, there's no real pattern. Um, it's been, uh, you know, your budget's too small. That's a reality. Um, and, and, it, and this was recent and, and this person was thinking about doing something else. And, and I said, well, you don't want to hire me to do it because I, I can only do it for two months. And that's not long enough. And you're going to be upset in two months. And I don't want to have, I'd rather have the, I told you so now than then. Um, <laughs> save your money. Um, Occasionally, it's, you know, you need this particular type of, you know, uh, facet of marketing, and I just don't specialize in it, and I'm not going to fake it till I make it. I'm not going to do that. Um, one or two where it's usually, there really hasn't been a pattern, but, but you know, if somebody's, if, if I can't help, I will tell them, and I will tell them as soon as possible and try to get them into a better landing space because um, what am I going to do? Take their money, fake it, fail and then what? I mean, I want to build a good reputation too. I don't want to take it. I couldn't look at myself. Yeah. That just would not be. I, that's well, and I, do that, I do that as well. You know, somebody will yeah. say, oh, you know, I heard your podcast or I saw you on LinkedIn or, you know, I know you in the industry and I need this kind of help. It's like, well, that's yeah. not in my space. So you, that's hospital facility. And, I, you know, I'm, pro, I'm right. on the profi side. You so. didn't know that, but let me tell you. And then yeah. you could be, you know, and here's just something that I do. Yeah. Well, and that's why I, I really was happy that you came on the podcast today because I know that there's some other marketing firms out there that'll just blindly take everybody, even if they don't know the space, even if they don't. Yeah, understand and it's, healthcare. it's it's so true, and and it's it's a time when there's something I say every once in a while, which is that I love marketing, but I hate lots of other marketers because, and this is one of the reasons why um, I wish that there was some sort of certification step 
or a licensing step or something that would just filter, filter for yeah. everybody's benefit. Because as we speak, it's 1030 in the morning and where I am, um, there's an army of marketers out there nationwide saying silly things and making silly promises. Um, and it can't back them up and it just makes it harder for the rest of us. <laughs> and I well, wish there was some way, <laughs> you know. Well, and, and remember that healthcare space is different. And, and I know, you know, everybody's space says that, but I think you need somebody, you know, like yourself that understands the healthcare space and understands the language, the terminology, yeah. you know, what the goals are for providers and, I, and, you know, dentists and physicians and trying to figure out exactly what, you know, the ultimate goal is and that is to, fill the practice with patients. So I think that that's a big, big key. Yeah. And what it takes to convince a patient to call you is different than what it takes to convince somebody to, you know, um, buy a box of cereal. I was going to say buy a hamburger. Yeah, buy exactly. a hamburger. It's just different. They're both important, but they're very different. And it's what I've been doing most of my career. The other thing, um, which people like you and I get more excited about, doctors notice it, but um, is that you better check that HIPAA compliance box or that HIPAA, yeah. you know, up to speed box. Marketing and, and HIPAA can overlap. They often do overlap. Nobody really notices. Um, and, you know, you you can inadvertently take a contact form on a website, right? It, give us your name and phone number. How can we help you? That little, you know, open field box. And a patient, prospective patient can spill their guts on what's going on with them or their family member. And anybody you see, you 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 have to protect that now. You just yes. do. And HIPAA doesn't care if they're not a patient yet or not. I mean, HIPAA HIPAA wants you to protect that. And so if you're if your website person can see that because they can log in, but they're not protected and they're not in your HIPAA you know umbrella, the HIPAA the, the HIPAA, HIPAA gods are not going to like you. you. Yes, yeah. they're going to. You just there's this risk. So make sure that whoever you you hire. Um, and help you set up a HIPAA compliant relationship, or really you, Dr. X, should be, you know, demanding that they sign your business associate agreement and whatever else you require them to do. We do that. We we can set that up. Uh, not a single client of mine was prepared to set that up. So I just said, screw it. We're going to, you know, do it and then have all the documents that we need to set up and, you know, all of our tools. Everything's HIPAA compliant. We we check the box. I re-audit every other year, um, tweak what I need to. So that it's not a, you don't hire an agency because they're HIPAA compliant. You hire a marketing agency because they can get the results that you want in a HIPAA compliant way, but you do have right. to check both boxes. Right. Well, it's funny you say that because I still get, as you know, as, as an auditor, I get records sent to me unredacted through the email for somebody saying, hey, can you audit these for me? Let me know what you cost. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Good thing I didn't open them. Well, the <laughs> lawyer I'm going to recommend hard charges you five fifty an hour. <laughs> Because you just messed that up. Yeah. <laughs> know, right. I'm like, oh, shoot. Um, just in closing. So just to wrap this up, one yeah. of the things that I've noticed, um, and I'm really surprised. I mean, we're in 2023 and I still see a lot of practices that don't have websites. Have you seen that still where there's like, you know, less maybe I should less. get one now. Less oh, and less. God. Yeah. Um, and they're, I don't know, they tend to be more, they're either really, really brand new Um they're really, really super duper specialized where, let's face it, 10 out of every 10 patients is going to be a referral from, you know, some other doctor that they know. That's just the nature of their practice. Right. Or, you know what, they made it this far, they're kind of in the twilight and they're just kind of riding to the finish line. That's yeah, when that's I see it. Right. Um, okay. I see some old, just painfully old websites, not even that as much as I used to. Dated. Um, yeah, I see that. Yeah. As well. Yeah. Or just out of, out of touch from a tech point of view. Yeah. Um, not as much as I used to, though. But yeah, you can find them. Well, one of the things that, um, and just to kind of add a little two cents here on marketing, uh, that I noticed that I, there was one website I thought was really good, and it was a, it was, it was kind of, I don't want to say dated, but it wasn't digitally advanced. It okay. didn't have movement and all that. But what I really liked about it is they had a page about the neighborhood and they put in there of where the practice was they put in there and we have local restaurants and coffee shops if you yeah. have to have a test and then you want to go you know grab some lunch and then come back and they actually wrote it up like that yeah and i thought wow what a great marketing tool to tell somebody that you know there there's a restaurant right next there that you could you know next to the practice that you can 
go grab a Starbucks or something and then come back. And I think that people miss that people are looking for convenience, everything convenient nowadays. So, well, and, and if we just sort of extrapolate from there, so that's, you know, you go visit that practice and you're going to be there for a few hours. What they're doing, aside from being nice, is they're laying out, look, your experience here, if you had to come here and do this, be pretty good. I mean, yours, you know, it wouldn't be so bad. Come, we'll draw the blood. We need a few hours, go get a coffee, come back, and then we'll tell you what's going on. You can make a day out of it or whatever. You're just sort of describing the experience. A lot of reason why uh, the, the hidden barrier that uh, that's always out there is, it's, I just call it, it's like the question mark. So what would it be like to visit you? Um, what would it be like if I, if, if I became a patient of yours? Uh, what would it be like if I had to spend a day there? Um, and you just sort of dispel that. And then they go, oh, that's all it is? Okay, I think I'll call. Um, the easiest way to dispel that, pictures. Pictures on your website, pictures on your Google My Business listing uh, or Google Business Profile listing. Shockingly effective. You wouldn't think. Shockingly effective. How you take pictures? It's you and your phone. Don't overthink it. Do a tour. Start in the parking lot. Take a picture. Take a picture of the outside of the building. Take a picture of the lobby, front door. Just as if you were walking from front to back, load them up. Holy cow. People digest pictures <laughs> well and i noticed because it, it demystifies what does this place look like yes. oh that's all well, awesome. and i've i know patients that won't go to a practice if they don't have um large size seats because the patient is is can't do, fit into so you know i seats. mean then there's all these individual yeah. stories out there yes. little things like that yeah. so you know yeah. you know what it reminds me of carl it reminds me of when i know this sounds so silly but when um i, I go to napa once a year Mm -hmm. um, and with my family and stuff. And that's just something we do. We're actually going in June and people think it's about the wine. No, it's about the experience. It's, yeah. you know, some of these wineries have beautiful outdoor spaces and water features and great staff. And I'm like, oh yeah, by the way, there's also wine. <laughs> so great. Right. <laughs> yeah, you know. don't forget. <laughs> don't forget. So by the way, there's also doctor, but you know, you need to also be comfortable in your space if you're going to trust your providers. So yeah. The, the marketing definitely, I think, extends to that. So yes, yes, it does. It's so nobody likes you. it, but you got to deal with it. <laughs> exactly. So we'd like to thank Carl today for being on the Edge Podcast. Your wealth of knowledge in this topic, I could talk to you for days on this. Oh, um, thank you. We're just so happy to have you here, and we hope to have you again. Yeah, it's been it's been great to be here. I'd love to come back, and um, no, it was a good time. Thank you. Good. So to contact Carl directly, go to the NSCHBC org website, click on find a consultant tab and type in Carl White and you'll have his direct contact, contact information. Also, as a reminder, the NSCHBC.org website offers monthly free webinars on a variety of topics, as well as a quarterly Medicare update. And our next one is June 20th, and I actually am the presenter for that, so check that out. Also, go to the NSCHBC.org and click on the tab Upcoming Education, and you'll get to our annual conference, which is June 14th through the 16th and is now open for registration. So that's it for us today, everyone. Please join us next month where I welcome NSCHBC member and financial consultant Sandy Schechter, and she is a CPA, and she is going to be talking to me about should physicians have a CPA or handle financials themselves in-house. So everyone, make it a great day, a great rest of your month, and thank you for listening to the NSCHBC Edge podcast. Thank you for listening to the NSCHBC Edge podcast. Join us on the second Tuesday of each month as our consultants tackle the complexities of navigating the business of medicine. You can reach us on the web at nschbc.org, the National Society of Certified Healthcare Business Consultants.